It is hugely popular. Stock car racing, or NASCAR, drawing up to 150,000 fans each week to Speedway stands. Face-to-face, -face, I caught up with two of NASCAR's finest drivers, 35-year-old Jason Leffler and 21-year-old Joey Logano. Well, before the big interview with the two, Leffler took me for my first spin around the Charlotte Motor Speedway. How fast are we going? Uh, as fast as that thing will go. I don't know, uh, 160, 170, <gasps> whatever. We'll get in there and... Okay, you know I'm a complete novice. Yeah. I have not I gone past that. 90 before. Oh, you're, so you're in for a treat. Is my stomach going to be able to handle it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So we're at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. I can't get any better than this. Or would this be perhaps your favorite track? It is one of my favorite tracks. Okay, I'm ready to roll. Let's you? Let's do it, yeah. All right, oh, let's yeah. go. Awesome. All right, what's it like to go speeding around this Charlotte Motor Speedway? I'm about to find out with Jason Leffler right there. You see, I'm not going to actually be driving, but the passenger? Come right on in here, just like the Dukes of Hazard. It's just like your standard car. You got your uh, H pattern, you know, manual transmission. You got your gas, brake, clutch. The only thing different is uh, obviously steering wheel comes on and off. Yeah, and you know what I noticed with the steering? You're you, generally very close, whereas yeah. generally when you're driving a yeah, regular yeah. car, you get to extend your arms. Yeah. Is that it, comfortable? Yeah, uh, yes it is. Because of the duration of the race, you know, your, your arms will get tired if they're way out here. So. Oh, okay. This one's not quite set up for me. Usually, I, like my own race car, I'd have it pretty close. So, so this, it's really about endurance. Yeah. Being able to yeah, oh, yeah. have it's, the wheel so uh, tight. Yeah. It's physically demanding in racing. People don't realize that. The heat, you know, it's a... It, there's a lot, you know, wrestling these heavy cars around for 300 to 500 miles is, is not easy. So does this ever get to be kind of old hat or are you like, do you get that rush every time? Yeah, you get the rush every time. I mean, it's what you live for. And, um, you know, it's the only thing I've ever done is drive race cars. And um, it, it's exciting, you know, it, it uh, doesn't get any better than that. You know, people ask, what's it like to be a race car driver? I said, beats working for a living, that's for sure. <laughs> Okay. Whose idea was this? <laughs> I'm actually really excited, and I know I'm in great hands with Jason here. So if I'm going to have a first-time race car experience, this is the way to go. We're in a Richard Petty NASCAR experience vehicle, so uh, here we go. Let her rip. Ready to roll? Ready. All right. Okay, I'm hooked. Yeah, I yeah, want yeah, to be yeah. a race car driver. That was just a warm up. That's awesome. That was just a warm up. That is so awesome. Wow. <laughs> I thought maybe I was going to close my eyes, but then I didn't want to miss anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so yeah. wonderful. And I was thinking to myself, okay, well, here we are, the only ones on the track, but the proximity to all the other cars. That's the real danger, that's the real risk involved. Oh, yeah. And well, the excitement, too, right? Yeah, that's, and that's where the skill is. Um, you know, you got a lot of variables when you have other cars on the racetrack. Obviously, they're probably in the lane you want to be in. Mm -hmm. um, you're getting dirty air, which we call it dirty air. You're getting their weight, mm. for, you know, off their car, which is making your car handle different. And it's just all how you uh, work traffic and set your car up for traffic. and. Oh it's not goodness. as easy as just pulling up behind somebody and driving by them when you're fast. It really is. It seems like one of the hardest parts is really not to touch another vehicle. Yeah, I mean, it's tough, especially when you get 42 other cars out there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just 42 other competitive race car drivers, so everybody's fighting for the same piece of uh, real estate out there. Right. Yeah, that's where you see the wrecks happen. Yeah, or better yet, you don't want to be trading paint. No, you really don't. Um, <laughs> You know, you got to do what you have to do when it comes down to the end of the race, but you definitely don't want to be, um, the ideal thing is not to be running into yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. 
Have you counted the wrecks that you've had? I couldn't your... count the wrecks. No, I, so they have been that numerous? That many times. I couldn't tell you how many times I've been upside down. <gasps> Not in a stock car, but the other forms of racing, the dirt track racing I did before. Mm -hmm. I really couldn't tell you how many times I've flipped. Oh, Jason Leffler, what a gentleman. He's a great guy. And you know what? There's more, as you heard right there. He said that was just the warm-up. Beginning at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, back in the car with Jason Leffler. Um, we're going to go 170 miles per hour, whereas that time it was just about 100 or so. All right, alongside um, Leffler, I sit down face-to-face -face with Joey Logano. He also knows the thrill and the risks involved with NASCAR racing. I sat down with both to talk about their passion for stock car racing. Let's take a listen. So take me back where this passion came from. Here you and your family are living in Connecticut and somewhere this spark of go-kart racing and dreams of something bigger come along. How did that, what was the evolution of that? It's crazy, you know, I mean, my, my family wasn't into racing. You know, they, they, my father played baseball and basketball through high school and, you know, th those are the things I tried first. But I think the fact that I wasn't good at any of them, <laughs> I found something <laughs> I was pretty good at. I think that was the fact that I, I mean, I enjoy winning. I mean, no matter what it is, it's, if it's not racing, it's you know playing a board game, whatever it is you I want to win. So I think it's something I found that I was good at and I was able to win at, um, and, and I just liked it. You know, I was the kid with the race car bed and all the little matchbox cars and all that stuff. <laughs> that was that was this kid here, and uh, you know with all the racing gear, all the NASCAR stuff, and uh, I was just you know, fortunate enough that I was able to follow my dream. And uh, I mean, I never ever thought I'd be racing, you know, in, in the Sprint Cup Series against, you know, like, like you said, Jeff Gordon and, and Tony Stewart and all these guys that, that I watched on TV. You know, Mark Martin, I, wa I watched him on TV. I had, his, I had his gear, you know, I wore Mark Martin stuff around. <laughs> and here I am racing door to door with him. I, mean, I remember the first time that happened, I was like, that's crazy. I'm starting right next to the guy, you know, wow. it's just, it's not. All right, more face-to-face -face with Joey Logano and Jason Leffler throughout the afternoon, beginning at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Imagine driving up to 200 miles an hour, 200 times around a racetrack, over a 10-month, 36-race season. A lot of numbers, right? Well, two NASCAR drivers I caught up with face-to-face -face tell me it beats working for a living. Before we all sat down, Jason Leffler, number 38 on the track, took me for a spin around the Charlotte Motor Speedway to give me a more authentic view. So when you're practicing, what are you working on? Are you working on speed? Are you working on the banks? What, you what are, are you trying you're, to focus You're working on, on speed. Um, you're working a little bit of, of your technique behind the wheel of the car. Because the track conditions change every day, every time you come to a racetrack. Um, but then the main thing you're working on is your race car, trying to set it up communicating with your crew chief and, and we're not on the edge with this car I mean when you're on the edge and and um, you know you're not looking for seconds you're looking for tenths of a second so awesome. I love it. I so love it. Man, why didn't I start out early? I could be a race car driver. Oh, Danica Patrick, look time. out, because I am so hooked. You're going to have some competition one of these days soon. <laughs> I loved that. That was great. So how fast do we go? How fa we're Not that it matters, because, you know, I can feel it on those turns. So we're probably going 100, 170 for sure. Wow. That is fierce. We're going faster than the car wanted to go. It felt good. So, yeah, you liked yeah, it. Yeah, I liked it. Good. I wanted uh -huh. to give you, a, you know, give you real idea of what goes on out oh, there. Oh, you so. totally did. And I just tried to imagine all these other cars on the yeah. track and how close you like to be to that wall. Yeah, yeah. We so weren't even that close to it. I took it really? up there one time just to give you a feel for it. But sometimes your inch is off that wall. Mm. You just go wherever your car handles the best. Wow. So that is uh, fantastic. Pretty wild. I love that. <laughs> well, I'm really admiring your job. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. You Be got a cool gig. Beats working for a living. I, I'd say so. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Put your legs on. Oh, my gosh. I love that. That was so fun. I don't know how many times we went over. That was another thing I noticed. You lose track of where you are. Well, you probably don't. I noticed the threes and the fours for the turns, maybe. Yeah. But um, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Not... 
you know, if you're, if you're not used to it, it's easy to get lost out yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, Who would have thought it would get it's easy to get lost when you're going in a circle? Yeah. Thank you so much, Jason. <laughs> Thank you. I love Thank that. You. I, I, that was I'm fun. glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, so what's with the steaming there? Do we? Uh, uh... I think we ran the car a little too hard. <laughs> we did. That's all right. AJ's I got said, the full experience, the full effect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we wanted to give you the full deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at 170 miles per hour around the track. So driver uh, Joey Logano says he still gets that same kind of rush when he gets behind the wheel. After the driving, I sat down face-to-face -face with both Logano and Jason Leffler to talk about their passion for stock car racing. So take me back where this passion came from. Here you and your family are living in Connecticut and somewhere this spark of go-kart racing and dreams of something bigger come along. How did that, what was the evolution of that? It's crazy, you know, I mean, my, my family wasn't into racing. You know, they, they, my father played baseball and basketball all through high school, and, you know, th those are the things I tried first. But I think the fact that I wasn't good at any of them, <laughs> and I found something <laughs> I was pretty good at, <laughs> I think that was the fact that, I mean, I enjoy winning. I mean, no matter what it is. It's, if it's not racing, it's, you know, playing a board game. Whatever it is, you, I want to win. So I think it was something I found that I was good at, and I was able to win at, um, and, and I just liked it. You know, I was the kid with the race car bed and all the little matchbox cars and all that stuff. <laughs> that, was, that was this kid here. And, uh, you know, with all the racing gear, all the NASCAR stuff. And uh, I was just, you know, fortunate enough that I was able to follow my dream. And, uh, I mean, I never, ever thought I'd be racing, you know, in, in the Sprint Cup Series against, you know, like, like you said, Jeff Gordon and, and Tony Stewart and all these guys that, that I watched on TV. You know, Mark Martin. I, wa I watched him on TV. I had his... I had his gear, you know, I wore Mark Martin stuff around, <laughs> and here I am racing door to door with him. I, mean, I remember the first time that happened, I was like, that's crazy, I'm starting right next to the guy, you know, wow. it's just, it's not. Very fun stuff, you can catch the rest of my face-to-face -face conversations with Joey Logano and Jason Leffler at 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock Eastern today. Top NASCAR racer Joey Logano, number 20 on the track, has loved cars and racing since he was six. Now at age 21, he is smoking up the stock car circuit face-to-face -face at the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte. He told me how much he both admires and is inspired by the NASCAR greats of yesterday. You know who he is. Hey, bud. How are you? Good, good, good. How you doing? Hey, man. What's up? So, yeah, I think it's cool. We walked through here and uh, a lot of fans here, obviously. And uh, I think the cool part about this part of the Hall of Fame is you see all the race cars, how they change from the beginning. I need to walk up the hill here and, and see, uh, you know, how the race cars have changed. You got Earnhardt's car, Gordon's car, you know, all champions and stuff in here. So it's just, uh, it's cool. You got Modifieds down there, which I, I think is a really neat race car. Um, they, they still race today, and they look pretty much the same as, as they did back then. So How would that change your driving experience, you think? As far as being able to be in a different race car? Yeah, if you were in any one of these different cars. I, I think you, you always got to be able to adapt, you know, and uh, I think that's something that's, I was able to do growing up is drive a lot of different race cars and, uh, and, and being able to adapt to certain race cars. So um, every one of these cars up this hill are driving completely different than the next. Are you ever interested in Indy? Are you ever interested in trucks? Are you ever interested in formula? You know, I, if, yeah, racing's racing. You know, I'd want to drive anything. Really? I love NASCAR, though. You know, and, and stock car racing is just, I feel like, is where I, I, I want to be. I feel like that's where the best racing is. Excellent. So what's it like when you look out of the fans here, whether it's in the stands or here at the Hall of Fame? It's great. No, I, I think it's awesome. We wouldn't be here without the fans. There wouldn't be a Hall of Fame. There wouldn't be a, a Joey Logano, the race car driver. We wouldn't be doing this interview right now if it wasn't for the race fans. Does something happen, though, as soon as you, you know, get into an arena? And you see thousands, 170,000 people in the stands. Does that kind of give you an added adrenaline rush? Does it make you nervous? Do you think to yourself, oh my gosh? Uh, you don't realize, you know, when you're in the car, you don't realize there's a lot of people watching you. You know, you just, you're out there racing. You're concentrating on your game. <laughs> you. uh, but the, when you get out of Craig Bristol, for one thing, you know, I think it's really cool the night race. They, have, uh, they always do something neat about it, but there's so many fans there, and that's one place that really feels like a stadium. You know, when, uh, when that place is full and they do a national anthem and they do a flyover and all that, that's when you're out of the car and you get to see it all and experience it and hear the fans. That's uh, so cool. As you walk down here and you look at these vehicles, you got a favorite or a fantasy fantasy ride that you see here? Um, <laughs> obviously, the Richard Petty's car here, 
Bobby Isaac's car. Uh, I think really cool Richie Evans' car up there, the modified. You know, for me growing up north, modified racing is huge, and uh, you know, to this day I, I got to drive one before, and it's the most fun race car I've ever driven. Really, and, what makes uh, that experience so special? The fact that there's just uh, you know they're they're pretty light. They got a lot of rubber and uh, they got big bumpers on them and uh, you ever get to go watch a modified race at your local short track uh, it is the most entertaining race you ever go to uh, it's just crazy you can beat and bang the cars are tough and they're just there's fun to drive they're really fast and uh, i think it's the best short track car you can possibly have like that is that probably because it's complete opposite with the stock car racing where you know you don't you don't want to bump I mean, that's not the objective yeah, when you're exactly. going 200 miles per hour. That's going to be a wipeout. We fight aero every weekend uh, when we go to these fa fast racetracks. And um, you, you can get behind someone and make them loose. You can get on their door and, and make them really loose. There's people taking the air off you and, and, and really adjusting what your car is doing uh, while you're in there. So it, that's, it's a different way, but the same thing's still happening. Joy Logano, thanks so much. All right, thank All you. All the best. I had I'm fun. Sure one Appreciate day it. you and your car are going to be right in here. I hope so. <laughs> In our next hour, face to face, I talk with both Joey Logano and NASCAR driver Jason Leffler about going so far in a sport that goes so fast. At ages 21 and 35, these next two athletes are at the top of the NASCAR game. Stock car drivers Joey Logano and Jason Leffler talk to me face to face about how they have excelled so quickly in a sport of speed, agility, and endurance. So here we are at the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte. I'm with two of the brightest and the best in the biz, uh, Jason Leffler and Joey Logano. So the average age of the NASCAR driver is somewhere between 25 and 30. And then on average, that winning streak comes early 30s. Both of you seem to have defied the odds uh, on your winning streaks very early in the game. So what is the secret? You know, Joey, you first. How did you, you know, get out of the starting blocks so early and so good? I think for me, you know, I started when I was really young. You know, I think a lot of kids that are coming into the into the NASCAR series now are really starting when they're, you know, six, seven years old. And that's when I started. Um, and when I was 15 years old, Joe Gibbs Racing found me um, and gave me the opportunity to get in really good race cars at a really young age um, and, and really helped my learning curve go a lot quicker than I think it would have been if, if it went a different way. So You started at the age of 12, which is considered kind of late, late when you look at now. the yeah <laughs> when you look at the the scale now but for you you know do you feel like it come you know starting out any sooner might not have been the right formula for you i, I think at the time it, it wouldn't have been but um by the time i was 12 i wanted to do it so bad I, I developed such a passion for it that i think that's what helped me later on in the years you know and who do you admire are there are there those drivers that you thought, okay, one of these days, you know, I'm going to be neck and neck with you, and then voila, here you are. Yeah, I mean, there, there are, there's numerous drivers on different different levels that I've always admired. Jeff Gordon was one that I always admired growing up, and uh, Tony Stewart was very helpful. I mean, he was helpful in, in getting me my shot down here in NASCAR. So anytime I get a chance to race with those guys, I'm, I'm pretty excited. So, Joey, what happens to you when you get ready to race, when you get in the cockpit so to speak behind the wheel is there like a real transformation that takes place with you yeah i mean i i think there's there's two different joeys you know there's <laughs> joey away from the racetrack and there's joey at the racetrack and uh you know i think that's kind of what you got to be you know you got to be able to enjoy life for sure but when you're at the racetrack that's serious time you know that's time you're you're, you're working really hard on your race car uh, to make it better with your team uh you know and, and when before the race starts i just become really quiet because i think your mind's just going a million miles an hour about all the situations that can happen, what you want to do if certain situations happen, what we can do. Um, and it's just a, a bunch of un unknowns, basically, until the green flag drops. You know, so you're trying to just prepare yourself the best you possibly can uh, for that race. And um, you know, just in case something happens, because it, you never know what's going to happen. It's like any other sport. Uh, you, you, something can happen lap one. If you get put in position, you know, last lap of the race, what are you going to do? You know, things like that, they always run through your mind. And that's going through the whole race. You know, you, you know, as you're going 200 miles an hour out there, you're thinking about the next pit stop, what your car's going to do, trying to position yourself for the end of the race. All that stuff uh, is always going through your mind, uh, and, and that's where you just need to be prepared for all that the best way possible. Can you ever be too confident? I don't think so. I think you need to be very confident. 
You know, I, I think there's a line between being cocky and confident. You know, I, mean, I think you need to be humble and, and, and take a step back every once in a while and look at where you are and how lucky you are to be able to do something like this. I mean, how many people want to drive a race car as, as a living and get paid to drive race cars? I mean, that's that's, <laughs> Just that's pretty everyone. cool. <laughs> In my eyes, that's, that's, I, mean, I can't think of anything else I'd rather do um, or anything else I probably can do, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I second that. Oh, they are the envy of everyone. Who doesn't want to be a race car driver? I bet you Don Lemon at some point in his life wanted to get behind the wheel and just, ah, just go really fast. You are bad as you want to be, aren't you? But <laughs>